Well, time to stir the comfy soup. Or maybe I can take you guys on a garden tour. We'll get back to this. family and friends this is Rob the Sapper Gardener representing Essiance Family Garden and one thing that we have not done yet is really show how our garden is broken down so today we're going to take you through the four main garden areas we have set up and uh, kind of explain a little bit of how they came about and how we did it so we're going to start off we're here in the inner garden and this was our first garden area we set up when we built the property. I'm going to turn you guys around and walk you through and talk about what's going on. So we use our deck as somewhat of a staging area. So we've always got multiple plants up here. And we do tons of pots. few little mini beds scattered about but we set these beds up when we first moved onto the property even before we set up the privacy fence we were doing beds here so our thought when we did this would be you know we want our garden areas close to the house but not so close that we worry about the pest disturbing us when we're sitting up on the deck or barbecuing or whatnot but uh, this has really worked out well for us we consider this one of our two main garden areas and we have a lot going on here we've probably got 50 plus garden beds here and when we say garden beds we usually break our bed areas up into four by four so when we say garden beds this one would be one two three four we would count this as five garden beds because it's i'm sorry we would count this as five garden beds because it's five four by four sections and that's how we think of it and that's how we do our planning we don't really practice the square foot gardening method, but we do somewhat break our garden areas up like that, especially when we're starting to look at companion planting. We also have over here where Maggie's sniffing about is we set up garden areas along our privacy fence line so we could take advantage of the microclimate, but we could also kind of use space that we knew we're not going to be uh, walking in there and doing stuff so we figured that was some empty space and would also give us some uh, additional shades for some of our plants and again we've got containers everywhere throughout here so this is the inner garden we've got a ton growing on here we've got our new scarecrow and his scarecrow buddy will be outside soon maggie come Maggie, and we've got all sorts of stuff growing, corn, uh, Malabar spinach, bitter melon, okra, sunflowers, yeah, we've got a little bit of everything, and yep, our snake gourd is still doing its thing, and we've got a lot of beans throughout everywhere over here so sometimes i actually even get confused we've got so much my wife is much more detail oriented than i am so there are times i have to say sweetie what do we have where and she'll tell me and then we'll go from there hold on just a second so we have to be careful. Maggie likes to eat anything that she can find, right girl? 
So, yeah, this is an example of what happens to the bitter melon when it gets overripe. Uh, it turns color. You can see there's like a, a purplish jelly ooze around the seeds, which that can be used for some purposes, but we don't use it. But uh, yeah, we're happy with everything here in the inner garden. So let's go to our second main garden area. And if you've watched some of our videos, you may notice that when we bring Maggie outside of the privacy fence, we typically have her on leash because we do use uh, pepper flakes and some other things out to help with pest management. And we definitely don't want her getting into an area that we have pepper flakes in. But this is our second main garden area. And we call this the garage garden, which is not super creative. But we typically have a lot of different things and it helps with a uh, crop rotation. Uh, we had our potatoes over here. We've got some uh, okra, some pigeon peas, some other things, yacon, some ubi. And it just really helps having multiple areas to grow things. And we've got our honeydew melon and some okra here, which we're still working on the pest management. <laughs> And Maggie sniffing where the last gunk we uh, removed from the property was. So we're thankful we did not get sprayed in getting rid of that one, but we all know what skunks do. So this area is one that we did not have success with this year. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of our crops that we had over here were eaten up by uh, pest animals, rabbits, groundhogs, but we're not going to give up. We're just going to do a better job of trying to keep them out. Uh, and again, this really helps us with crop rotation and we do still have things growing over here. Obviously we've got some corn, we've got some uh, melons growing in. We're trying to do the three sisters. We've got peas. And some of the peas have done really well, um, especially the purple hole peas. So we know we'll get some pea harvest. Uh, we've harvested garlic from over here and onions. And obviously uh, this is one of the areas our tomatillos come back every year. But yeah, things are doing well. We can't write this area off anytime and it does really help with rotating our crops around we did tomatoes here last year we're doing tomatoes inside the privacy fence this year and it just really helps us so that we can try to cut back on the disease and blight and things that affect vegetables when you grow them in the same place year after year so our third main garden area is micro orchard one this is where we set up our first fruit and nut trees so over here we've got four apple trees two cherry trees two or three almond trees two or three pecan trees two cherry trees several fig trees so this area we really focus on growing some uh, low maintenance crops. We've also got our kiwi vines over here. Uh, we've got several kiwi vines. I'd say we probably have eight kiwi vines and we're hopeful that we get kiwi from them eventually. But uh, this area also has several grow bags that we've set up that we've put several things in. My wife has planted some uh, pigeon peas, some water, uh, spinach, several other things over here. And we've alternated different garden plants and things in uh, the pathways between the fruit trees and the fence. Uh, we've planted blueberries, uh, figs, raspberries we've got different vegetables along the fence line 
and this is just a great area uh, we did have some trouble when a tree came down on it a couple of years ago damaged some of the trees uh, damaged some of our berry bushes which we're still in the process of reclaiming but yeah overall micro orchard one has been pretty good for us we've planted onions out here we did uh, not the job sears we did a different grain out here and i'll i'll have to look to see what it was it escapes from my memory now but yeah things do pretty well over here this area gets a combination sun and shade so we don't have to water it quite as diligently as some of the other areas but we do have a uh, hose set up out here it's not fully covered by our irrigation sprinkler system so occasionally we do come out here and we water everything but it's coming good coming along good even though this tree still has some serious gangster lean i have to adjust the yeah i've got to adjust that system a little bit better to see if we can get that growing straighter somewhere in the future so let's walk over to the fourth garden area and then i'll try to wrap up before we go over to the fourth garden area i just wanted to point out we do have a fence line around micro orchard one and one of our goals eventually we do like having the honeysuckle on the fence so it can uh, help with the pollinators the bees the butterflies but eventually we want to put some uh, vining plants on here some uh, probably some kiwi maybe some grapes maybe hops so when we do clear this out eventually we'll add some um, fruiting vines so that we can uh, utilize the fence line for that also so we try not to have anything that's completely decorative we try to make sure everything has multiple functions uh, we obviously have our chicken coop out here which we're growing hops on but we try to make sure we have at least two functions for everything and the fourth garden area that we have set up out here is micro orchard 2 in this area we added some beds but it's mostly fruit trees so we've got probably a half dozen apple trees at least two of each fruit tree you put out here pear tree plum tree peach tree we only have one dogwood but dogwoods don't need a pollinator to grow with but we've also got pawpaws which we've got three pawpaw trees so we're pretty happy with what we have out here and even though we know these are not going to be annuals in our area we have our moringa trees and we've got our pigeon pea trees which you can see these are all growing nicely the pigeon pea is probably six and a half feet now and we expect to get quite a few peas from it our moringa which we've collected started collecting leaves from is growing up nicely we've got peanuts We've got strawberries over here, even though our strawberries are dying back this time of year. But this area, we just have to really be mindful that we come out and we do our weeding as necessary. Because unlike the inner garden, the micro orchards are farther away from the house. And that leads to inattentiveness. So... We have to try to make sure that we get out and we take care of them. Like I've got to do some uh, weeding around the fruit trees. We always do rings around our trees like that one or the flat rubber rings to help with weed control. But we still got to get out here with the weed eater periodically so that we can uh, make sure all the nutrients are going to the trees and not to the weeds. So there's an example of the rubber ring we put down a coat of mulch and then we put a rubber ring on top and that really helps it to keep growing. 
So we've also got our Hoogle Mounds out here. Hoogle Mound number one with the Cherokee Tan Pumpkins doing very well. But we've got a weed around it. But one thing that was interesting, the Cherokee Tan Pumpkins did great and are growing well. But none of the peppers that we put out here, we did some jalapeno pepper seeds. None of the pepper seeds are germinated or doing anything. So, yeah, just something to know for next year. But we come over here and we did some uh, pea seeds in this one and they came up. So, I'll come back out, I'll weed around these when it cools off today, and we'll see how things go. And we still got our big wood pile to get rid of, but Micro Orchard 2 is doing good. We've done better at watering, but we all know when you start watering, the weeds shoot up faster than the trees and the plants do, so. Since we're watering more regularly now, we're going to start weeding more regularly and we also have grapes over here so more perennials that we hopefully will not have to do much with so let's go in and wrap up all right there's nothing like filming or thinking you're filming five minutes of video just to find out when you go to edit that you took a couple of photos. So I'm out here with Mr. B. Yeah, we did the garden tour. Uh, not a garden tour, but more a review of uh, what we're growing out. Uh, one of the things that I was trying to remember earlier was the sorghum we grew uh, a year or two ago out in Micro Orchard 1, but yeah, we're happy we have our little section off garden. Um, a lot of folks think that we have a bigger property than we have, but we really I don't see it as a big property, but that's kind of relative. If you are, you know, Green Dream Project with 40 acres minus a mule, uh, to me, that's a big property. If you're uh, Joey at My Slice of Heaven Outdoors with, I believe he has 70 acres, that's a big property. To me, two acres is not a big property. But if you have a, you know, 10th acre lot in the city, two acres, you know, probably would be. So it's relative, but we're happy with the, the land that we have. We can grow a, a good portion of our food. We probably grow more than half of our uh, vegetable produce. Uh, a lot of it's cans. Obviously we can't eat everything fresh, but uh, a lot of canned stuff and frozen stuff, uh, stored stuff, potatoes, onions, garlic, so uh, sweet potatoes, potatoes. So we're, we're happy with everything. Uh, are there things that we would change on the property if we could? One thing we would love to have, if possible, would be um, goats. Uh, we're not allowed to have farm animals aside from the chickens, but uh, if we could you know, have a wish of a, an additional thing to have, it would be goats. Uh, and if we had goats, we would obviously clear. We have uh, almost an acre of woodline over there. Uh, if we did get goats, we would definitely clear some of that wood line off and fence that in. Um, I believe the term someone told us was paddocks. Uh, if we could have separate paddocks where they could feed on, um, we would love to do that, but right now we can't do that. And uh, guinea fowl is another one. We'd love to have some guinea fowl to help eat up some of the ticks, but you know, it is what it is. We're blessed to have what we have including good neighbors up oh, there's mrs sg and sapper pup maggie who went on the tour with me 
So uh, obviously I'm not a, a fashion model by any means, but the reason <laughs> I have a different hat and a different shirt now is uh, after the tour, I came up here and chatted, then I went and I uh, put out, uh, put some comfrey out. Uh, and when we do our comfrey, we, uh, you know, take a, a couple of uh, glassfuls or cupfuls, we add it to a gallon container, we add water to it, because you don't want to put your uh, comfrey tea or comfrey soup directly out onto your plants, because it's, it's just really, um, potent stuff so you always want to dilute that but I did that afterwards obviously got some on me it, it smells so I took my shower um, sat down to edit the video and then noticed I had a couple of photos where I thought I had some videos so uh, our friend uh, uh, Lydia uh, cooking with lids uh, she's changed shirts a couple of times uh, I think she secretly is a, a a model for clothing but I'm not I'm just a regular dude so <laughs> okay so that's my rambling for today uh, hope you guys enjoy and understand the way our garden is set up a little bit better hopefully you can enjoy the sunset behind me as mrs. SG takes sapper pup Maggie out to do some of her sapper pup business um, yeah just a uh, little bit of a ramble today on what we have uh, and it's always good for me because we tend to have tunnel vision uh, we go out and work on our garden in sections so we work on a section at a time um, and we really don't even think of it as a, a whole garden we think of it as gardens plural so we'll work in the inner garden you know and we'll focus on that then we'll focus on micro orchard one and micro orchard two and then uh, the garage garden so we think of it as small but uh, again it's relative depending on your frame of reference you know we have you know four decent sized gardens or we have one huge garden if you think of it overall an acre of garden beds you know a hundred plus garden beds so I'm tired I worked out in the yard today in the almost 100 degree heat now it's down to 88 89 it's cloudy we had a really good dinner I'm gonna go in and spend some time with the boys and Mrs. SG I'm going to get this video edited and hopefully I hit the record button yep instead of the photo button yeah when it's bright and sunny out you can't really see the screen even though you're getting a good picture so sometimes we don't even know what we're filming until after we finish so all right so this is rob the sapper gardener representing essence family garden as always god bless our great country america god bless you wherever you may reside in the world god bless your garden your harvest your kitchen your meals and especially bless your family to have health, success, and prosperities we have. Take care. Sap her out.